Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another Instant Deck Tech. So today we're heading to Modern to check out a sweet mono red control deck built around snow covered lands. This is Scred Red, recently took Alex McFadden to a top 8 finish at a SCG Modern IQ in Roanoke, so congrats to Alex on their finish with the deck. A quick reminder before we break it all down, if you enjoy this deck and want to see it made into videos, take a minute, click the like button, the subscribe button, leave a comment, and Anything you can do to support your deck because whichever deck is most popular gets a shot at being made into videos next week. So Scred Red is unique in the fact that it's built around snow covered lands. In fact, every land in its deck is snow covered. So snow covered mountains works just like normal mountains, except they're snow covered. They have that extra type in their land type line. So basic snow land. Scrying Sheets is pretty neat. It's a land that adds colorless, but you can pay one and a snow mana. So mana produced by eh, a snow covered mountain, for example. And you get to look at the top card of your library, and if it's a snow card, you get to put it in your hand. So you get to hit any of the lands in your deck, so about one third of the time you will draw an extra card and get a land off the top of your deck so you're not drawing it when you activate Scrying Sheets. You also can hit Scred. So Scred is the namesake card of the deck. One mana instant deals damage to a creature equal to the number of snow permanents you control. So in this deck, it's basically one mana deals damage equal to the number of lands you control. So it's really one of the most powerful removal spells in modern if you are playing all snow covered land. Uh, in the early game, you should be able to kill most things when you have a couple lands, and then in the later game, you should be able to kill most big things because you have more lands. So it's just a really powerful removal spell, uh, but it sort of restricts your deck building to some extent in playing a bunch of snow covered lands and not playing duels because there's no good snow duels. The rest of the deck is kind of a mono red control deck. So it is a main deck Blood Moon deck. That's one of the key pieces of the deck. So since you're playing all mountains, tons of basic lands. Blood Moon doesn't really hurt you, but it disrupts your opponent a lot, makes it really hard for them to cast spells. Then you have some random artifacts. Mindstone will make sense as we go through the rest of the cards. The finishers in the deck are actually pretty expensive, so it's a bit of ramp, and the key thing about Mindstone and Relic of Progenitus is they do something, but they also cycle. So in the worst case, it's uh, three mana draw a new card. Two to cast it, one to sack it. Relic is two mana draw a new card. So in the situations where they're bad, they're never that bad because you can always turn it into something else. And then the deck just plays a bunch of removal. So lightning bolts go along with screds and roast as targeted removal. And then you got six sweepers. You got <laughs> essentially six pyroclasm effects, three volcanic fallouts, and three actual pyroclasms. The finishers are pretty sweet. So P and Karen Delar, Storm Breath Dragon, you probably know what they do. P and Karen is nice. You can sack the tokens it makes to deal direct damage. It kind of clutters up the board, makes it hard for your opponent to attack you, gives you multiple blockers. And you can actually sack your Mind Stones and Relics of Progenitus if you really need to as well. Storm Breath gives you some hasty damage in the air. Worm Coil Engine is just super powerful. If it's not getting hit by Path to Exile, which is kind of its nemesis in modern, it is gonna take over the game with lifelink and death touch and it's just so hard to kill because it makes those worm tokens the spicy part is goto bandit warlord a six mana three three when it enters the battlefield you get to tutor in equipment and put it into play and then when it attacks for the first time each turn you get to untap it and all samurai you control and take another combat phase so you can use goto to search up a batter skull which is living weapon so it immediately enters the battlefield with the germ token so you're essentially getting a 4-4 lifelinker for free along with your Godo, which is a pretty good deal, or you can find a Sword of War and Peace. And then the final finishers are some Planeswalkers. So Koth is awesome in a deck with a lot of mountains. Negative 2 can add a ton of mana, and it also just beats down. Once you lock your opponent out of the game with removal and Blood Moon, you can just make your mountains into 4-4s four and smash your opponent every turn. Chandra gives you some card advantage. Also can finish the game by hitting a Lightning Bolt with an ultimate, or just pinging your opponent to death. And Sarkin the Dragon Dragon Speaker is kind of an additional storm breath as a hard to deal with hasty flying threat. In the sideboard, we have a bunch of removal for specific situations. Gutshot, 
hits Ink Moth Nexus, things like that. Reality Hemorrhage is a big new addition. It's a way for the deck to get rid of Core Firewalker, which is normally just a nightmare, but since it's devoid and has no color, it gets around the protection from red. And Sunshock deals with infect creatures, uh, the Death Shadow creatures, things that are being targeted with pump spells and taking over the game that way. Then you have some land disruption. Molten Rain and Stone Rain help against Eldrazi, help against Tron. Boil is kind of a foil to blue decks. And then some more artifacts, another Relic and a Torpor Orb. And finally, some ways to deal with Affinity and Vandal Blash and Shatterstorm. Anyway, that is Scred Red for Modern. That's been our Instant Deck Tech for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's Instant Deck Tech, and I will talk to you soon.